everybody who's making these individual decisions are part of a statewide mission to save lives. Eastern Washington is now officially moving into phase two of the state's reopening plan. Today, Governor Jay Inslee announced five Washington regions taking that big step in the roadmap to recovery. Some Spokane County businesses have been closed since November. Now that Spokane County is moving into phase two, we are here at the Spokane Comedy Club to share their reaction at the chance to reopen. Following today's big announcement, we are talking to the president of the Washington Hospitality Association, what this means for the restaurants in our region. We continue to track bitter cold wind chills. We have that wind chill advisory in effect. We're also tracking lots of snow to the south of us. Your complete forecast is next. But today is a very good day for being able to have businesses open and, and customers being able to have more access. It's a good day to give some financial assistance to these hard hurt businesses that have been so innovative. Well, you heard it, huge breaking news tonight as Eastern Washington has just been approved to enter phase two of the reopening. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Crumb 2 News First at 4. I'm Tom Sherry. Welcome, everyone. I'm Whitney Ward. Yeah, today we have got live team coverage with the latest information from Governor Inslee and exactly what this means for our local businesses. So we want to get straight to it. We begin tonight with our political reporter, Casey Decker, and the announcement that we just heard from the governor. Casey? Well, Whitney, it's the announcement our area has been waiting for since November. Some restrictions will now start to be lifted. This as part of the new reopening plan that was first announced in January. Regions need to meet three of four metrics to move out of phase one into phase two. There are no other phases at the moment. And just a few moments ago, Governor Jay Inslee announced Eastern Washington is one of the regions that meets those criteria. You can take a look here. Our case rate is decreasing by a solid 43%. It only needs to be decreasing by 10%. So that's one. Our hospitalizations have gone down 17% since the last check-in. Again, meeting that 10% requirement, that's two. Our ICU capacity at 73%. It just needs to be under 90, so that's three. And our test positivity rate, well, that's sitting at 10%. It needs to be less than 10%, so we don't meet that requirement right now. But that doesn't matter. We check enough boxes under the current plan to move forward. And the science tells us that we are currently driving this pandemic down quite dramatically. We are having considerable, measurable, and scientifically fact-based success right now. And we have uh, businesses that have been suffering closed for months and months now. We have consumers who have not been able to go to gyms and restaurants to some degree, and we want to honor that. So we believe this is a reasonably scientific-based position on the current conditions of this pandemic. So what exactly does all this mean? What actually changes now? Well, let's take a look at the biggest differences. Now, these all go into effect this coming Monday. First, and this is probably the biggest one, indoor dining will return for the first time in months, though just up to 25% capacity. Two, indoor entertainment venues. Those can open up as well with also 25% capacity, a maximum of 200 people in a venue. Gyms can also let more people in under the new phase, again, maxing out at 25%. Outdoor sporting events will now be allowed, but participants and spectators, those can't combine for more than 200 people. And very small indoor social gatherings will be permitted in your homes, up to five people and only two households combined. That means if you're the host, all your guests, they have to already be living together. Now, of course, this move is not permanent. We could get booted back to phase one if our numbers start to get worse again. In two weeks, updated metrics will be posted. We still have to be meeting three of four criteria. Now, it doesn't matter which criteria, we could switch which ones are passing and which ones failing and still qualify as long as we meet three of them. Now, if we don't check three or four boxes, the phase one restrictions come back that following Monday. So some great news today for a lot of local businesses, but of course, Spokane and the rest of the region need to stay diligent unless we want to go right back to where we came from. Tom, Whitney. Well, phase two in eastern Washington, not set to start until Monday, right. uh, but with Valentine's Day happening on Sunday. And of course, these bitter cold temperatures across the state making outdoor dining unlikely. In the press conference today, Governor Inslee was asked if he would allow restaurants to open in phase two before Monday. Uh, it's something uh, I can think about. 
and, and I will give some thought to that. There may be some procedural and legal ways we can't advance that. I will give that a little bit of consideration. The governor's announcement is welcome news for small business owners of wineries, clubs and entertainment venues that have been closed for months with no revenue and bills that need to be paid. Absolutely. Creme 2's Amanda Rowley has been talking with business owners here all afternoon. She's joining us now live from the Spokane Comedy Club. Hi, Amanda. Yeah, good evening, Tom and Whitney. So yes, we are at the Spokane Comedy Club. This establishment has, has closed all the fun that they have here for the last almost year. Now, joining me this, this afternoon is General Manager Kim Good. And Kim, tell me what your reaction is to this big news, Spokane County moving into phase two, meaning you guys can reopen. Uh, honestly, it's unbelievable. I got the news today and I, I don't even know if I still believe it. I'm kind of waiting for that first show to happen and I think it'll set in at that point. Yeah, and you guys have adjusted though. You're, you're still offering food to folks in the meantime, right? Yes, we are. We have three restaurants right now to kind of keep us going, keep us in the flow so that we can be standing here having this conversation and yeah. be back open when we're allowed. Yeah, and, and so, so now that you can reopen, I guess what can you tell fans of the Spokane Comedy Club? When can we expect you to reopen? The second we got the news today, we started booking our calendar. So as quickly as we can get those, these comedy or comedians in, we're opening the doors yeah. as when of I, Monday. So when I walked in initially, you were just so emotional oh. about this news. This, this is huge. I mean, some businesses have been able to reopen just a, a few business opportunities here and there, but you guys have really, I mean, been been through the hard part, huh? Oh, completely. Um, but honestly, we couldn't be here without the community. Um, I know that. So many people have reached out, shown us so much love, supported us through these changes, and kind of stuck with us. So, like I said, we couldn't be here without everyone. Yeah, great. And when you were talking about booking uh, the calendar, we do have uh, Kelsey Cook here. She's a comedian <laughs> who has obviously been affected in the entertainment world. So this yes. opens up the entertainment opportunities. What does this mean for you here in Washington, hearing that, okay, these opportunities are opening up? Oh my God, it's so exciting. Uh, most of us comics, have not really gotten to perform in a comedy club like this live for a year. So having live comedy coming back, it's so great. It also means getting to do less Zoom shows and virtual shows, which have been such a strange transition. And I just, I can't wait. I'm headlining here April 8th through the 10th, and it's just, I'm so excited for it. But you've stayed busy though. What, what other things have you been working on? Yeah, so um, over the past year, um, I, I actually shot my first comedy special during the pandemic. Wow. So it was shot outside, socially distanced, and it comes out February 26th on Epic. So would love if people check that out. And then um, you guys on Creme here actually might've seen a story of me and my dad doing our Trumpet Tuesday videos. Yes. Uh, my dad's a trumpet player in the Spokane Symphony and obviously his job was also very affected. So yeah, we've been doing that on my Instagram. Great. And we love watching that. We love seeing you and we're excited <laughs> to have uh, folks, you and other comedians back here at the Spokane Comedy Club soon. Yes, yeah, so excited. Thank you so much, Kelsey and Thank Kim you. for joining us here. So exciting news for the Comedy Club and other entertainment venues here as Spokane County moves in to phase two of reopening. Reporting in downtown Spokane, Amanda Rowley, Krem 2 News. <laughs> Amanda, thank you very much. You know, it really is incredible the lengths that these businesses, these individuals have had to go to, but that they have been willing mm -hmm. to do just in order to stay afloat for this moment today. And then now they have to line up comics yeah. that, you know, are outside of the area yeah. and get them to come here. And there's some money there. And then they have to find staffing, which has been probably laid off. Right. And there's a lot to do. And boy, but I'm... I know they're happy to yes, be back. Yes, yes. Never been so happy to do so much yeah. work, for mm -hmm. sure. Uh, today's announcement also impacting thousands of high school students all across our region. So it looks like we're going to have some sort of semblance of high school sports in just a few weeks. Brenna Green joins us now in the newsroom. She caught up with some of the people affected. Brenna. Yeah, a few of our high school sports slated to start in a few weeks were able to compete regardless of the phase we are in. But for football, volleyball and girls soccer players, today's announcement was everything they've been waiting to hear for 10 months. And the GSL volleyball games will start February 23rd. Football will begin Saturday, February 27th. Girls soccer, provided we stay in phase two, will start March 1st. And cross country, which can happen regardless of the phase we're in, will begin March 6th. I spoke with Gonzaga prep quarterback Ryan McKenna and Shadle Park football head coach Jim Mace about what today's announcement means to them. Just a little context for Jim's quote. I broke the news to him over text before our interview. It's exciting. It's obviously a great feeling just to be able to 
have something to look forward to again and know that you're working towards something that's going to actually happen. I can be honest. I mean, uh, when, it, when it's quiet around my house a lot of times, I'm like, are we even going to have a season? Are we even going to have a chance? Are we you know, blowing smoke to these people and families and kids? And when you sent me that text, I started thinking, wow, like <laughs> I wasn't blowing smoke. They are going to get a game. We will have so much more tonight at six from both Jim and Ryan, as well as GSL director Ken Van Sickle. By the way, February 27th could be one of the biggest sports days our region has ever seen. As I mentioned earlier, high school football will start then and Eastern and Idaho will also start their football seasons against each other that day. The Gonzaga men also have a free date that day, and I wouldn't be surprised if they schedule a home game and finish out an undefeated regular season in the kennel. Back to you guys. Feast or famine, as it always <laughs> yes, tends yes. to be. Uh, but certainly a lot of people very excited about this news. Today. I'm one of them. Yes, <laughs> me too. Absolutely. Uh, the thing that is really getting a lot of people's attention oh also gosh. right now is step outside in about three seconds. You want to go back inside. Right. Outdoor dining is tough. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, so well, let's talk about this uh, again. We've got you take a look at the weather headlines. It's pretty obvious. We've got these wind chills that are across the area right now. Bitter cold wind chills. As a matter of fact, we're looking at some sub zero temperatures that we've seen across the area. Uh, uh, we've got lows in the teens and single digits. Also a chance of snow locally here in the Spokane area Saturday through Tuesday. We are seeing snow though happening down to the south of us. We've got a winter weather advisory in effect, kind of like from Lewiston and Palm Pomeroy to the south, two to four inches there, where you see it shaded in pink. That's a winter storm warning in effect until Saturday afternoon. Could pick up four to eight inches of snow. And of course, our wind chill advisory here locally as we look for winds to drop maybe uh, 10 to 15 degrees below zero. When you take a look at the current temperature, it's 19 degrees. But with that east northeasterly wind at 15, you're right now you've got uh, lower single digits or you're around zero as far as a feels like temperature is concerned. We are tracking snow that is again to the west of us and to the south of us, and it looks like it's going to remain to the south of us until about the weekend. So dangerously cold wind chills tonight uh, with an air temperature of six degrees. My gosh. And then tomorrow continued windy. We'll look for a daytime high of about 21. As we look ahead to the weekend, I've got uh, 23 on Saturday with a chance of some snow and also a chance of a few snow showers on Sunday. Continued chilly. 10 the low Saturday morning. Morning, 12 the low on Sunday morning. Of course, that's Valentine's Day. Well, let's go to somebody who's very cold right now. <laughs> Meteorologist Thomas Patrick, who is live in our outdoor weather center. Thomas, let people know how to keep themselves safe in this bitter cold weather. Yeah, you actually might be able to hear some of the wind just on the microphone, but uh, I can tell you what you got to dress in layers. Extra shirt underneath, heavier gloves on top and I uh, uh, got the scarf and uh, I honestly could go with another hat might grab that in between some of our later broadcasts. But when we talk about dangerously cold weather, it's the potential for hypothermia and wind chill. And uh, hypothermia is when your core body temperature gets colder because of the extended period outside. Uh, some symptoms of that include uh, dizziness, confusion, slurring of words, or not knowing where you are. Just general confusion because you're losing some of your brain's mental fortitude. The other issue would be frostbite, and that, that is uh, more on your extremities. So if you had a uh, hand without a glove for 30 minutes or an hour outside, you might start to see some frost develop on your fingers, general numbness, or even a warm sensation. If that, if either of those uh, occur, you want to make sure that uh, you get yourself to a hospital right away because those are both very dangerous situations, especially when we have not just how cold the temperatures are going to be, but these winds just making things feel and really are that much colder overall. So be careful, especially for the next two days. Thomas, thank you very much. These are really important reminders because it's really easy to go outside and think, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm just going to be out here. But you kind of don't realize how quickly things can set yeah. in. And of course, the wind, that compounding factor that it makes it extra, extra cold yeah. on your skin. Yeah, this is no joke. Right. This is the real deal. This is dangerously cold weather right now. So, uh, and now really through the weekend. So you just got to take, uh, uh, can't be the tough guy, tough mm -hmm. gal, get inside. Take